Welcome to our second podcast on movement across membrane. Uh, so in this one, we are going to look at the effects of tonicity and bulk movement across a membrane. So tonicity, important, okay? Relative measure of concentrations of solutions. Uh, the environment um, can have serious consequences for a cell if the cell doesn't do certain things to prevent loss of molecules or gain of molecules as it needs it and bad things can happen okay so it affects both plant and animal cells um, as we can see here so in an animal cell and we've seen um, you know how this can affect but if you have there's three different um, terms we use we have hypotonic solutions isotonic solutions hypertonic solutions okay so for the circles are indicating what is normal for a cell. So in an animal cell, we like things to be isotonic, which means the concentrations um, outside the cell are equal to the concentrations inside the cell, and there is no net directional movement of water. So things are at equilibrium. That's isotonic. When you have a hypotonic solution, that means that there's fewer solutes and therefore more water, and so in the case of a cell, an animal cell, if you place a cell into a hypotonic solution, water is going to enter, 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 and whoomp, and it's going to explode. Um, and you can click the video that you guys see there um, in order to see this happening. And so check that link right there, and you can see this actually happening with cells. Um, and then a hypertonic solution is when the solution has greater amounts of solutes, therefore less water. So if there's greater water inside the cell, water's going to osmos out and the cell's going to go and shrivel up. Now for a plant cell, you know, it's a little bit different. We want a cell to be in a hypotonic solution where it's going to take in a lot of water and that cell is going to expand to the point of being very, very turgid, um, which means that there's a lot of pressure being pushed against the cell wall and the cell wall prevents a lysed cell. So it's pushing up against, if it's in an isotonic or a hypertonic solution, it's going to go like, it's going to get all wobbly and it's not going to be able, like a blade of grass wouldn't stand up straight or your celery in your fridge, that's all limp. And then in a hypertonic solution, we get plasmalized and it actually goes, which is what we saw with like the elodia cells that you can see here. They've been plasmalized um, and most of the water is gone. There's no coming back from that. So if we have a certain content of a cell, our model here, and I want you to think of in which way can sucrose go, but what if sucrose can't go, then what happens? Water will move instead. Okay, so out in the environment, you have sucrose, glucose, fructose, and then you have sucrose and glucose inside the cell. So if we add those up, okay, there is a greater solute concentration inside the cell than outside. Water would move in, okay, and you'd get movement in, okay. Now, the contractile vacuole in some you know, um, cells will help to prevent overexpansion of water. Okay? It's an adaption okay, that allows this type of cell to live in a hypotonic environment compared to it. This is um, why we can find paramecium in pond water because that vacuole actually takes in the excess water that comes into the cell and literally contracts, so this takes energy of the cell, to push water out. And by doing so it prevents the cell from exploding. Right. Now, in fish, depending on whether it's a freshwater fish or a saltwater fish, marine fish, you're gonna get different osmoregularity adaptions that occur because obviously a saltwater fish um, is living in a more hypertonic solution while a freshwater fish lives in a more hypotonic solution. Um, and so it has to be able to um, regulate either not losing too much water or in fact you know not being taking on so much water that it, that it bloats okay so take a peek at these and it will explain you know explains kind of how fish handle in these adaptations that are handled so you can pause it here if you need to just to kind of read through that so when we have active transport versus passive transport, 
um, this is what comes into play. So in different solutions, cells are required to use energy to prevent that movement. Again, remembering passive transport is straight up diffusion across the membrane, could be facilitated diffusion through channel proteins. Um, if it's active transport, we're going to move those molecules against their gradient using energy. And so this is where cells use up a lot of their energy is maintaining concentration gradients for homeostasis. Okay. But sometimes we need to move things in big amounts. So moving the big stuff. We have endocytosis and exocytosis. So endocytosis, we're going to intake, exo, we're going to release. Um, so let's look at endocytosis first. Two different types, cell eating, cell drinking, and cells just being generally picky. So specialized molecules, um, if it needs to uptake those, uh, it will do that to take in energy pieces. So in cell eating, we call this phagocytosis, where we're going to literally, in a, like an amoeba has these pseudopods where it streams its cytoplasm out and around, whatever it is, it takes um, the cell membranes meat, and boom, you have them sucked into a vacuole. Cell drinking is known as penocytosis, so this takes vesicles around the liquid, pulling them in. You can see that in the TEM there. And if cells are being picky, it will actually coat the vesicle in a way so that it doesn't, um, so that it can pick very particularly what it wants to have. So if there's certain receptors that are there and how it actually um, you know, will coat the vesicle if it needs to, you know, yeah, I guess be picky with what it's doing. And then we have exocytosis, all right, and this is actually the cell exporting out um, huge chunks, and this usually comes off of um, molecules that have been packaged by the Golgi, and from that uh, secretory vesicle is going to head out to the cell membrane, attach on, and whomp, push right on out that material. So that's it for our movement across membrane. Um, if you have any questions regarding any of this stuff, make sure you jot them down in your notes, bring them to class so we can go over them. These are the main things you need to make sure that you can do uh, as we work through all of this, um, these particular things. So, you know, take a second to look through these and see if there's anything on there that you don't feel comfortable doing um, or understand so that during our disco we can go over it. Okay, so just make sure you take a peek at those. Um, and then just something to finish your day. Oh, no. 
See you guys in class. Bye.